All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we have a lot to go over in the tropics because now we have two tropical cyclones once again. For today's comment of the day, I wanna know what do you think is gonna happen with this second tropical cyclone that we now have the track. Let me know in the comments down below what you think will happen and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're taking a look at that two day graphical tropical weather outlook. The, video, the storm we talked about in yesterday's video is that one that has a 10% chance or disturbance number two, according to this, although it should be number one because it came first, uh, but it only has a 10% chance of developing over the next two days. Here is our second disturbance, and it has a 50% chance of developing over the next two days, which is very crazy, obviously, to see this one pop onto the scene and then have a 50-50 shot of developing over the next two days. Now, once we take a look at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, you can see things are not looking good for that first tropical disturbance. It has a 10% chance of developing over the next five days now as well. So this one looks like it likely will dissipate, although there is some models that are still very much so on board with this one continuing to develop. I think the National Hurricane Center is really siding with the GFS Ensemble model here, which is like the only one showing it really break up. So we'll talk about that more towards the end of the video, but I think it could be a little higher than 10% in my opinion. Here's the five day graphical tropical weather outlook here for the second disturbance. As you can see, a 70% chance of development over the next five days for this second disturbance. Obviously very insane, like I said before, just to have a storm developing like this, that that's soon off the scene. Here is our satellite imagery, and this is our first disturbance, and as you can see, uh, it is not looking too organized at this point. That one's not near development. This one, however, the second one, looks like it could be a tropical storm over the next 24 hours. I mean, really, this one has some nice structure to it and some nice spin, and if it just fills out a little more, I think this one will develop into a tropical depression, at least if not a tropical storm, over the next 24 hours, if not 48, and if not beyond, because there's a 70% chance at this point. Now here's the probability of tropical depression status according to our European model, and this kind of encompasses the area of both of the, of the disturbances here, as you can see. But between the 30th and the 3rd of July, you can see that we have a 90 to 100% chance of tropical depression status within this red region. Obviously, that's almost certain, so that's that's obviously a very high percentage, and we're expecting a tropical storm. Now, as we move beyond here, you can see this is the three to six day outlooks, is days three through six, or July 3rd through July 6th. And this is the probability of tropical depression still, but as you can see, we have that mint green color there. I think this is kind of indicating that the two separate storms separate. I think our first system goes offshore of the East Coast, and our second one is south of Cuba there near Jamaica. Uh, but we have a 40 to 50% chance there uh, in that area near Jamaica, and then we have a 30 to 40% chance in that area offshore of the East Coast. Here's the probability of tropical storm, and as you can see, we're also at a 90 to 100% chance here over the next three days, the 30th through the 3rd. Now, the interesting thing here, here's our hurricane season so far. As you can see, we're all the way A, B, C, D. We have four storms so far. In 2020, we set the record for the soonest E name that was Tropical Storm Edward, uh, and we got that on July 6th. If this model is correct, we will break that record by a few days and be the earliest E storm on record, actually being ahead of last hurricane season on pace to beat out last hurricane season. Do I think that's likely that we end up actually beating the hurricane season of last year? No, I, I, don't, I really don't think we will because it was the record-breaking season last year. So I highly doubt we go back-to-back -back years breaking the record. Is it possible? Well, we're on pace to do so. So yes, it is possible at this point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to go ahead and take a look at our spaghetti model guidance for both of these systems in just a moment. Now as you can see this is our spaghetti model guidance here from the GEFS model and this is Invest 95L which is our first disturbance by the way. And as you can see it just breaks up, it just kind of dissipates to the south. It looks like it just gets suppressed and then just really just never develops. And this reminds me a lot of Gonzalo last year. Tropical Storm Gonzalo had a lot of promise last year and then basically ended up going further and further and further south than expected with each model run. And then eventually it just dissipated and got suppressed. So I think that's a lot of what the GEFS is showing here. But as you can see, when we take a look here at our Canadian Ensemble model, we see that this one actually has it developing 
uh, possibly hitting anywhere from Louisiana to offshore of the East Coast, but a lot of these do have this one intensifying, and this one certainly does not have it breaking up over the Southern Caribbean. Here's the individual models, and these ones take it directly towards Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Cuba. That would definitely not be giving it the highest probability of survival, but it does definitely give it a longer life span than the EFS model did, which was basically very, very short-lived. Here's the intensity guidance, and as you can see, there is a few that just keep it underneath tropical storm status, but there is a few that take it into tropical storm status over the next 120 hours, which would basically mean that not only would we possibly get the E storm, but we would also possibly get the F storm at record pace, because it was July 9th when we got uh, tropical storm Fe in 2020, we would be beating that as well if this was the case. So there is the possibility that we break two records and we're well ahead of schedule compared to 2020, that would be obviously a huge uh, thing this hurricane season. Now, here's another huge thing. Here is the second disturbance, and tell me this doesn't look more concerning. The GEFS model first off for 97L, which is that second one. We have plenty of these models showing a very strong low pressure center, and obviously we see states like Texas getting some impacts, Louisiana, a lot of Florida there, South Carolina, North Carolina, even my home state of Virginia being impacted in a few ways there, possibly. So this is obviously a concerning look, and I'm going to continue to track this storm with you guys, as this one is now the biggest threat for, first off, a tropical or a tropical system in general to impact the United States at this point, but also our biggest threat to be the first hurricane of this hurricane season. That is a possibility at this point with this one, given this outlook here. Here's the Canadian ensemble model, and it's not much better, as you can see. It's very similar. Uh, it shows multiple United States being possibly impacted here. Not a good look. And then here's the individual models. We see a lot of Florida and a lot of the Carolinas seeing some impacts here from this as well. The only thing that could break this storm up is Cuba or the Dominican Republic and Haiti, which we don't know for certain if it's going to hit those areas. Obviously, we're going to pay attention to your impacts over there as well. We'll be tracking all of these things, obviously. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the intensity guidance in just a moment. Now here is the intensity guidance and I wanted to show you guys this. This has it basically within the next 36 hours, and this is from 60, so probably more like 24 by the way. Within the next 24 hours, every single one of these has at least hitting tropical storm status. And then a good majority of these have us rapidly within the next 72 hours developing into a category one hurricane. There is quite a few that also keep us in that tropical storm status, but there is a majority I would say that do take that towards hurricane status. This is obviously a very concerning look because first off the first hurricane, but this would be breaking records in many ways. First off this and then also 95L potentially coming in and breaking a second record right behind it. This hurricane season is already starting to feel a little bit like last season where we know this is something abnormal. We know this is odd. Uh, and, and overall, it's just a concerning feeling, you know, when you know this is not how it's supposed to be. I, there should be maybe one or two tropical systems, you know, that have happened by this point, if any. I mean, really, back, you know, thinking to the early 2010s when I was first paying attention to weather, I feel like there would only be like what, maybe one tropical system very early, like May or June. And then we start maybe get another one in July. And then obviously August and September, we get multiple. But this past two seasons, it seems like we're getting like four in June, one in May, two in May maybe, and then multiple in July as well. This is just not normal at all. And I feel like some people probably are getting used to this, but it is definitely not normal, I will tell you. For our confidence tab today, we're remaining at a three out of six. We obviously see this new tropical system developing. There's a huge question mark, obviously, with that first system, if it will develop or not. Will the GEFS model be right, or will the rest be right? It's hard to say at this point, uh, but that's why my confidence is a bit lower. For today's comment of the day, Amarion Gabriel said, I keep saying this, the fact that we are seeing multiple waves off the African coast this early isn't good. And that's another thing I didn't mention in this video yet. There's multiple more waves to come off shore of Africa, and this is way ahead of schedule. Usually you don't see this starting until maybe August and September, uh, if it ever gets this active. But to see it in late June, early July is insane. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, 
James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Villegas, Gary's, John Qualisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Cronenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting Patreon page, you could do so by joining that Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair from one and Catbite as well. That'll be located next to the subscribe button if you're interested in joining that. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a good comment down below because that helps the algorithm so, so much. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.